What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So today when it comes to macOS Sequoia, I'll be happy to let you know that we have a new software update as you can see right there. This is macOS 15.4 developer beta 3. The public beta should be coming out relatively in about a day or so and you can see for me updating from the previous beta 2 this update size comes in at 2.77 gigs and previously like i showed in my beta 2 video apple has made a change to this software update pane before you would have to click on the more info tab to see what the update size was and you would have to click on that in order to see all this text that's here that tells you what the changes pertain to the update are but now if you click on the more info tab right there you can see just takes you to this website that tells you how to update your Mac and you know check if you're on the latest software version which is pretty good but yeah you can see the update size for me and just to keep you in the loop there's a bunch of other beta 3 updates that were released today including watchOS 11.4 beta 3 vision OS 2.4 tvOS 18.4 we have Mac OS 15.4 iPad OS and iOS 18.4 beta 3 most of these i do cover on the channel at halfman half tech so if you are interested definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss out now this is the update now let me update my device and then we're gonna look at the new software changes among the new features that this software has to offer oh no this is actually bad so I have a problem and it's probably something that you might have actually experienced before. I forgot my phone's passcode and every time I attempted to unlock it, the time just increased and now even when I restart it, I always come up to this screen that my device is unavailable. Luckily, I know about Wondershare Doctor Phone, which is an all-in-one toolkit software for anyone that's looking for mobile solutions such as system repair, data recovery or data transfer and in my case, phone screen passcode unlock. Look at how easy it actually is to unlock my disabled phone. Step number one is to open Wondershare Dr. Phone and then go to the toolbox, select screen unlock, click on it. This window pops up and step number three is to select iOS since my disabled phone is an iPhone. Step number four is to select unlock iOS screen just like this and then click start. Step number five is to put my phone into recovery mode and connect it to my computer. No matter the version of phone you have, Dr. Phone is always going to help you or give you steps on how you can put it into DFU or recovery mode. The next step right here is to click the section that says next once the downloading process completes all you have to do is click unlock enter the passcode shown and then click unlock again and just like that my disabled phone is back to life something i really like about dr phone is the fact that it's well known and works on all major platforms plus it's optimized for the latest operating system so you can definitely expect blazing fast performance to learn more and try it out for yourself and see what it can do for you i'll leave links in the description of this video that you can check out and shout out to wondershare dr phone for sponsoring this segment of the video just like that, my device is now up to date with the latest macOS 15.4. Just to put it out there, the preparation time, this is probably the fastest I've ever seen macOS Sequoia take. For me, it took about five minutes to prepare and restart. And because of that, probably there was this screen that you can see where I sort of caught macOS off guard showing the installing update screen. And then from that, it just switched back to this screen that you can see right here. Yeah, but yeah i thought that was kind of weird but now that my device is updated if we go in to see the new software changes you know storage and then go to mac os right there you can see mac os for me is taking 22.36 gigs which is about average if we click on the more info tab right there you can see the new build number that we have it's 24e 5228e it ends with an e going to show that you know we probably are expecting a couple more betas to be released before this and in my previous beta 2 i highlighted that there was a bug where apple intelligence won't show the version being taken up by apple intelligence itself even though i have it enabled but you can see even with this new beta 3 the storage being taken up by apple intelligence no longer shows and so it seems like 
this is something that Apple is removing completely. Now, another thing I wanted to highlight when it comes to this update is the fact that it now supports the newly released Macs that were announced last week. And in case if you're wondering what are those newly released Macs, you can see here, if you go to the Apple newsroom, you'll be able to see that last week, Apple announced the new m4 ipad s and they have new wallpapers which i'll show you shortly and then apple also released the m3 ultra and the m4 max chips that are now supported in the mac studio and i'll be happy to let you know in the hardware support for this update these are now listed and that's something that's good and by the way once your mac is updated you always see this check mark that says you are up to date this is a new change in this software update pane within the newly released updates today there's actually code changes that suggest that home, the home app will no longer work with the old home kit architecture thereby requiring users to update to the new home kit and you'll see a message that says that support for your current version of apple home will end soon update now to avoid interruptions with your accessories and automations when you open up the podcast app after you update you actually see that there's a new pop-up screen right there and it's going to tell you that some of the new features here are the ability to add categories your select your interest and get relevant shows and see categories in your library which is here and if you click continue they also made an update like i highlighted previously where if you actually search you can see recommendations are made as you do that in real time to give you more relevant results which is something that's good and welcome now from the previous update you probably know that apple added about nine new different emojis some of these you can see like bags under eyes new fingerprint hop spade splash we have an updated serial flag a treeless tree and you can see all those here and now these are now showing up in this emoji tab so for example if you want to select like bags under eyes you can see it right there it shows up right there and there's no need for you to actually describe your emoji or do a search and if you're having issues with gen emoji you can see once you try and access gen emoji after updating you can see it says downloading support for gen emoji once downloaded this mac will be able to use gen emoji so it seems like it's downloading different models of gen emojis hopefully it's a change for the better or an update for the good and that's also the case if you are in a region where you probably had didn't have apple intelligence support and you enable it for the first time you are going to see a screen that says that it's downloading the latest version or just like what you see here when you select gen emoji depending on your wi-fi speed it is going to take some time and for me it's actually been a couple minutes and you can see it's still downloading support for gen emoji if you go into the wallpaper section right there you can see now we have the new uh released wallpapers that were released alongside the new m4 macbook is and you can see these ones are right there they pretty much honestly look like the same as the previous ones right there but yeah i think there's just like color changes and some of these patterns and i'm not sure if they changed them or not but you can see these match what we have on the website when i showed you some of the newly released macbook s and just to go there you can see the wallpaper right there and those have been added into the mac os 15.4 update and you can always set them according to your need or your preference if you want to have these i know i'm not the only one but since apple added the mail categories right here you can see you know by clicking on a category it enables or disable the categories by going to all mail but even with all mail selected i think there's a bug here that makes one or makes this uh summarization into the different categories hide certain emails because when i actually go into the categories and then hide the categories section you can go to the view section and then you can uncheck this and it will hide the categories there's emails that i see that won't show up in any of the categories so it does seem to be making some users miss emails and i'm not the only one a couple of people have reached out just to complain about this and you can see there's actually going to be different um, explanation messages below each category that you select so if you go to all mail you can see a description about that if you go to promotions if you go to updates transactions you can see what it's 
all about in the different categories or primary that you see right there. On a good note, I'll be happy to let you know that if you're experiencing some networking issues when you were using a VPN on the previous beta, that issue seems to have been resolved for a lot more users. And at the same time, we might actually see a new update, which is macOS 15.3.2. Since 15.3.1 was released on February 10, Apple is talking of a release for the corresponding iOS and macOS versions, which we might actually be able to see this week. Other than that, that's how this update is for me when it comes to macOS 15.4 beta 3. If you are waiting for the official release date, if I was to just open up my calendar right here, you can see, you know, today being March the 10th and us being on a weekly release cycle now, we can expect beta 4 since the letter that we have right on this update is an E, so we are expecting another one, so beta 4 on the 17th, and then maybe an RC, depending on what Apple does, we might see an RC on um, tw the 24th, and then maybe if all goes well we might actually see it on the 31st but if there is a beta 5 on rc2 then we might actually be pushing it to the release of our uh, for the official release in april now apple did say that this update is officially coming out in april so march 31st that will be an early good release for most of the users that are looking forward to this update being released now other than that that's how this update is for me honestly for me i live life on the beta since this is my uh daily driver device that i update this betas on i use it for work to edit videos record these videos and so on reply to emails it hasn't been too bad but my mac is not the greatest when it comes to the battery health you can see how it's sort of been in the last 10 days right there and my although my battery health says normal it's on 86 percent i have apple k plus and i think apple did say i can get it replaced early so you might have a higher maximum capacity and get it be getting better battery life and that's why i'm not talking too much about it because mine is not the proper depiction of uh, battery health right there but yeah let me know how your battery health and performance has been mine has been pretty average and most of the features and softwares that I use such as Final Cut Pro, iMovie, Ecamm Live to record these videos and Photoshop have been working pretty good. Now that's about it for me. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.